Okay, so we're uh, in front of Lug Nuts and uh, we have um, brought the, uh, the 2021 uh, Audi RS6 out front. We had some requests on BAT to see what it looked like in the natural light, uh, see what it looked like with the, um, with the uh, aftermarket uh, uh, wheels on it. Um, uh, check, see, see what it sounded like both uh, in the car and um, and uh, from outside the car, so we'll do this. Uh, we'll do a slow slow video walk around of the car, uh, just to show you the different contours and the way it reflects light and so on. Um, then we'll do uh, a brief driving video. We'll have uh, we took an exterior mic uh, so we can record what it sounds like from the outside. It's uh, we attach the mic to the rear of the license plate so we get a nice uh, exterior noise recording and uh, and then we'll also uh, do a narrated video on driving the car a couple of other points I, I, I that didn't make it into the bad description or my other longer video that uh, that I can make and anyway we'll do a pretty short video it's not it's it's not top gear uh, but I think it'll you know, we just had some very specific questions from some bat uh, uh, commentators and or hopefully bidders. And so I just wanted to address those. So first, the slow pan of the car, seeing what it looks like in the natural light. second part of this driving video where we'll uh, try to record the interior noise level and um, uh, and then maybe talk a little bit about the car uh, itself. Um, so firstly, you know, the, the, the cabin is pretty well insulated. So, you know, the outside, the, the exhaust is fairly, uh, you know, is fairly uh, prominent. Uh, but inside the car, especially at, at low speeds, um, you know, it, 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 it sounds like a luxury car. So once you open it up a little bit, you can hear the exhaust, um, but it's not obtrusive in any way. Okay, so uh, we can just demonstrate that here. 
Uh, as well, the uh, tire noise, for such large tires, actually the, the tire noise is quite reasonable. Uh, and with air suspension, uh, the, the ride's not too bad either. Okay. Um, so all in all, it, it's, it, it, you know, it, it's a, a car with terrific performance, you know, nearly 600 horsepower. And you know, it, 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 it has that effect of making you go a little bit dizzy if you're on it for th throttle, just because the, the g-forces are so high. Um, uh, but uh, it, it's also perfectly happy just driving around too. And so, um, you know, there's a lot of cars that are capable of, you know, super high performance and you look at them and you, you know, you can't wait to get in them. And then, you know, 10 minutes later, you just can't wait to get out of it. Okay. So this isn't a car like that. This is, this is a car you can drive um, daily. So we can hear the bypass open when we get to about maybe 4,000 RPM. Other than that, it, 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 other than that, it, uh, it you know, is fairly muted. So you really need, you know, there's something happening, sounds like something's happening around 4, 4,500 RPM that uh, changes the baffling in the exhaust system. And, and then you hear that, you hear that noise. Um, up in Solvan, if I, Go into 3,000 RPM. Yeah, something around in the 4,000, something happens. I'm just not sure if that's the way the exhaust is tuned or that's the actual uh, bypass. If I go into the RS mode, um, yeah, so the sound changes there. But this is this is still a pretty a pretty uh, pretty docile sounding car from the interior. I guess we'll go put it in one here. But as you can see, the you know it's a pleasant V8 verbal. No louder than Porsche Cayenne Turbo or Panamera Turbo or you know an M BMW. Probably even a little bit quieter than the BMW. I suppose what we haven't done is played the music, and so why don't we try to do that here? I'm like 40% of the way there and it's already too loud to be comfortable. It has lots of power. I'm sure, I'm sure nobody's going to be disappointed with the audio quality in this car. Interesting, um, you know, when I, when I, when I get cars, I, I, you know, I go through them and try to understand them. And I also pull up all the information on the trip computer because I'm curious to see, you know, what the mileage the car gets and the average speed and so forth. And I just, it's kind of a nerdy deep dive into the uh, the cars that I handle um, I, I and I and I did as a matter of uh, as a matter of interest uh, check all of the cars that came through the Porsche dealership for uh, for average speed and fuel consumption and uh, just you know just just to try to nail down real-world consumption on the cars that I was selling and and what I found with that was that um, it didn't, the consumption didn't so much matter which car it was, but the consumption was directly tied to the average speed of the car. So what I found, what I found was firstly, uh, that the average speed tended to be around 35 kilometers an hour in Calgary. And it didn't seem to matter what car it was or who it was. Uh, it just seemed to be most of the cars that I looked at uh, averaged about 35 kilometers an hour. 
Uh, and this, uh, you know, maybe six or, six or seven out of 10 even were clustered around that uh, point. There were some highs and there were some lows. The slowest average speed that I ever saw was this little Japanese lady who used the car to go, a Mercedes to go from her home in downtown to her sushi restaurant. And the average speed on that car was 13 kilometers an hour. <laughs> the highest was this guy, this crazy guy with a GT3 who was like a cannonball run, gumball rally, crazy guy that, that could never keep his driver's license and his wife always had to drive him around. And I believe the <coughs> average speed on his GT3 was 80. And that was like off the charts. I'd never seen anything close to that. You know, effectively, that, uh, uh, the high range of that is maybe 45. And that was for somebody who lived a bit out of town and had some highway driving. So, so this car happens to be uh, 60, uh, which is a very, very high average speed. And also, the, and the second thing I, I learned when I did this is the fuel consumption is directly correlated to the average speed. Okay, so obviously at 13 kilometers an hour, you don't get very good fuel consumption. And not too many people drive the car super aggressively, um, you know, because most of the time you're just driving yourself around. Um, and so this car averaged 12 liters per 100 kilometers. Considering that it has almost 600 horsepower, that is uh, a terrific figure. Um, that 12 liters per 100 kilometers is what I saw on four-cylinder Porsche Macans. Um, and so, so that says a couple of things about this car. One of them is that because it lived in Invermere, which is a small kind of resort town in the middle of BC, there's virtually no traffic. And so anywhere this car went uh, was on the highway. So that explains the, the, the 62 kilometer uh, average speed. And also partially uh, the 12 liters per 100 kilometer um, fuel consumption. Um, it also says something to the uh, about the, the engineering that goes into this car. You can have something that's close to 5,000 pounds with uh, almost 600 horsepower running on 22 inch you know, steamroller rubber and it can still get 12 liters per 100 kilometers. Well, anyway, uh, I, I wanted to just share that with you and if I can remember how to uh, bring up the trip computer in this car. Out of the last 30,000 kilometers, we've averaged 62 kilometers an hour and 12.1 liters per 100 kilometers. That is excellent for a car uh, with this performance and this size and weight. Amazing, actually. So um, with that, we'll wrap it up. I um, hope that was informative. Um, and, uh, and as they say at BAT, uh, good luck with the auction. Thank you very much, Lawrence Romanowski from Calgary, Canada.